Hey everyone, this is Steve Chase here. Hey, welcome everyone. And this video, we're gonna talk about setting up the chart of accounts inside your QuickBooks online account. So congratulations, it's probably very exciting to be getting a journey of a new business owner. And uh, one of the things that will help you successful is really to sit down and think about all of the different types of income that your business will be receiving and of course, um, you'll have necessary sacrifices, we call them expenses, that will you'll incur as you're running your business that will hopefully yield profits coming in. So my recommendation on day one, or really the first week, is to really dive into your QuickBooks file right off the bat after you set it up and clean it up. We would want to delete accounts that it comes with because you want to keep it simple and clean and the chart of accounts is a living document if you will that can expand as your business grows but what's can be bulky and weight weighting you down is just having all unnecessary clogging up of unnecessary uh accounts inside that okay so let's uh jump right in here i'm going to share my screen Okay, after you're logged into your QuickBooks, you can find the chart of accounts several ways. One way is by clicking on the gear in the upper right hand corner and you'll find chart of accounts underneath your company. Uh, the other way that I typically will go is I'll just click on the accounting tab on the left sidebar and that will take you uh, to your chart of accounts. All right, so as we look through the chart of accounts here, these are some of the built-in ones that we see here. Let's start off with uh, removing something that we don't want, okay? All right, so let's click on let's repairs and maintenance, okay? I'm going to go ahead and just kind of hover my mouse over to the side here, click on the triangle that points down, and you'll have the ability to edit incur like re renaming an account or deleting. I'm going to click delete. It gets me a chance to say yes here to confirm that. Okay. And then it's not typically like deleted, deleted. It's inactive, but that's the way you would go about doing it is you could do that. So if you're curious, oh gosh, what if you made a mistake and you delete something that had something associated with it, you recognize it, how you would un- do it um, as you would click on this little baby gear above action. And there's an option that says include inactive that you would click on. And then once you get that checked, then you would be able to see it and edit and then you could un inactivate it. <laughs> that makes sense. Okay. All right. We're going to talk about adding account. So on your first time, you're going to definitely need to click on the new button here and add your bank account. So when you're looking at your account types, these are fixed account types. These are every transaction is going to run through one or more of these types here. So bank, checking, savings, and so forth. And typically, you know, you would give it a name. So let's imagine you're opening up a Chase account. And then I like to do the last four digits of the account. And that's it. Save and close. I'm not gonna worry about the balance here because that can be done depending on how you set it up, set settings, so forth. Okay. When you have a bank account that's connected to the bank feeds, which is another topic, you will see a double headed arrow going in both directions. That lets us know that those accounts are connected to the bank feeds. And that's a very powerful way. And that will be um, something that you'll do after you set up your bank accounts. Okay. If you have a credit card, you would go up and you'd want to record all your expenses in your credit card. So we would just simply click on the credit card account type, give it a name. Last four digits and save and close there. And yes, you'd want to set up, you would want to uh, connect your credit card. So credit cards and bank accounts can be connected to the bank feeds. And those are the only two types of accounts that can do that. So savings accounts, checking accounts, same thing, bank account, and so forth. All right. Um, 
we're going to talk about creating an income account next. And so we would click on the new command, change this to income, pick a detail type that best resembles what you're after. All right, and let's say that we do on-site um, deliveries. And that's it. Just come up with what it is that you want to call it here and then save and close. Now, uh, I'm going to take a quick little peek here of making sure that that income account is connected to an item on your sales forms. Let's imagine you're creating an invoice. So you open up the invoice form. An invoice is money coming into the business that a customer is paying you. Okay, and typically you might consider invoices money going out of the business if somebody gives you a PO and they invoice you for an expense you're making. Not in QuickBooks. An invoice is money coming into the business. That's easy to trip up over when you're new to QuickBooks Online. A bill is money going out of the company. Okay, so invoice, good things. We have a customer and they're paying us. I'm just going to show you something here. When you click on the product service drop down here, notice that uh, we don't see that on site delivery that we were talking about earlier. So um, we need to add it as a new service to our QuickBooks account. Our profit, I'm going to close out of here. Our profit and loss statement is going to run through the income that you see listed here in the chart of accounts, but the sales forms are going to get connected to the actual products and services that you provide. So to set those up, you would go outside of the chart of accounts, click on sales, and then in the upper corner, we can click on products and services. It's here that you can create a new product or service. Click new. Okay, determine the type that you're working with. I'm gonna click on service. So it's okay if, they're, if it's named the same thing as the chart of accounts income, but you've got to uh, come right here to the income account and link it to that account that you want it to look at. Okay, if you have a, uh, unit number ID that's associated with it and e-commerce, you could put that in there, some kind of a combination of a new code that's a SKU number there. Okay. You can add a note here if you want to have it, it will kind of come in underneath the main one. It's okay to leave the sales price rate blank unless you always have the same number as a default. You can do that if you want to. And I'm going to click on save and close now. Okay. So now if I were to open up the new invoice, pick a customer, notice that the drop down will have that item there. Okay, so I can add that to the list here. And you can add more than one row of items selected here. All right. Okay, great. So now let's go see exactly how that, uh, that invoice that I just created. And uh, here's a quick tip to return back to the invoice. If you click on the same way you got there, the quick create invoice, there's going to be a nice little shortcut back into it by clicking on this button here the, to, to find your most recent transactions. And this will show us that right there. Okay. So I'm going to run a profit and loss statement by this month of May. And we would click on reports, profit and loss, and have it um, for May. 
Let's do this month. Okay. So you can see right here how the on-site delivery is showing up as a $45 revenue. Okay. And then the rest of the items are linked to the sales that we had selected. So notice that if you have a, a, a good memory, I selected a consulting item. Let's go review that real quick here. Put this invoice. Return back to that uh, invoice here. And again, consulting, $500. Okay. The reason for that, if I switch back to this report this month, the reason for that, I want you to think about that. Think about why is it showing up as sales? I'm going to click through and that 2,500 there. And you can see the invoice today, 500. Well, here's how we'd figure that out. Go back to sales. I'm going to go review consulting. So here's consulting. I'm going to, it's a service type. I'm going to go over to the side, click edit. And then I can see that consulting is underneath the sales income account. All right. So if I wanted to change that to something else, let's say I change it to sale of product income. I would have the ability to click also update this account in historical transactions. I get one chance to say, I want to go back in time and recategorize anything that was an invoice item or sales receipt item that uh, had that item on it. If I wanted to do that, I would have that. Ability. So keep that in mind that you get a chance to go back in time to do that. So I probably would wait to do that until I actually had a clear and you can't uh, add new accounts, unfortunately, in here. So you'd have to close out of here. If I wanted to be truly consulting, I'd have to go back to accounting, add a quick new one, I'll call it income. Consulting, save and close. Then let's go back to reports. Oh, actually, nope. Got to go to sales, product services, edit. And I'm going to change consulting to go from sales to consulting now. Then I am going to take advantage of also update this account in historical transactions. Same and close. Let's look to see how that report shows now. And if you have multiple tabs, you're working with it, your business owners on the side and they're on the same screen, make sure they would refresh the browser to get the current uh, updated one if, in case you had multiple sessions running at the same time. And here we go. You can see how we've got consulting connected like that. Clicking on there and I should see that $500 one. So very good. Okay. So I um, hope you didn't mind that little detour there. I thought that was really important for you to see the relationship of your revenue numbers connected to the chart of accounts based on the sales forms. Now let's finish up the chart of accounts by adding some expenses types. So when you go over to chart of accounts, you look at your expenses and you might uh, think, okay, I want to add an expense, so you come down to expenses. Now this detail type is kind of frustrating because it forces you to pick one. I wish it wasn't here, but it is. So you have to decide the best appropriate, and it really doesn't mean anything. It's kind of trivial, and, and they created this, I think, just to help it match up with tax, TurboTax, but it's not working, it's not used, but the designers of the software have to ha are making us pick one. So. Don't put a whole lot of effort into stressing out over which one's which. The main thing is, look at the top account. It's an expense. That's what counts. Whatever you put down here is not necessary. Okay, so you're gonna remove one. And if you were to type something, let's say you start typing software, and then you come down and pick something else, it will automatically change the name of it. So do yourself a favor. Wait till you uh, type. Wait till you pick 
the detail type before you start typing it. Software, click save and close here. All right, so if we had an expense for software, we'll just click on here. Now this is gonna come through your bank feeds. So let's say Google, software. Now there is a built-in account called office supplies and software. So if you are wanting to separate that, we could go, I'll show you how to remove office supplies and just make it office supplies and have software all by itself as an expense. Okay. I'm going to add a 39, $35.99 software expense. And then we're going to go change the name of office supplies and software to just office supplies. By editing off to the side there, we can take that away. Save and close. Cool. So let's end this video with a profit and loss report for this month. And you're gonna see that software expense showing up here. Hey everyone, I hope you enjoyed watching this uh, tutorial in QuickBooks, helping you set up your chart of accounts. For more tips and tricks and videos, uh, feel free to check out my website at sequentialsolutions.com forward slash blog to get uh, my YouTube channel and video posts that I have. Have a good one.